Yeah, it's a pleasure. What's up? February 13th, 2022. An important day. Why? It was Super Bowl Sunday, you know, and I'm, I'm doing this a little bit later because I watched the Rams win and that was really cool. You know, I was excited for all the, the players. I like to follow football, you know, um, just like I like to follow basketball, too. Did you guys see the Trojans last night? We beat UCLA, you know, um, super, super cool for for both teams. Uh, all right, so um, uh, we're going to get right into it. Uh, we're going to go into this week's weekly discussion. But before that, as promised, I just want to remind you about how to go about doing your first short writing assignment, all right? Two to three pages of writing. Just grab the graphs, put them into the very back of the paper, or put them into the body of the paper. You can do a little data analysis, okay? Uh, we've taught you about population trends. Now's your chance to go in and, and, and check things out and, and interpret the difference between um, the USA and a, a couple other countries, all right? So here it is, okay? Again, it's due Wednesday. We look right in there. We, we kind of fully, fully flush out what you got to do, okay? So you're going to go. This is the um, the uh, home page for this uh, the website, World and Data. And then we actually direct you to exactly where you got to go right here into the, a couple of different um, uh, links that go right into where we wanna, want you guys to uh, develop some data on it. All right, so what is the data? You're going to compare the U.S., okay, right here, to two different countries, okay? And... Um, uh, one, it, it really doesn't matter what countries you choose, but the only thing we ask is one country must be developing. What's well, a developing country? They don't have some of the modern advances that we have, and so that's going to change their so, so, social structure, okay? Um, they might be a more agricultural society, okay? Um, and uh, less manufacturing, less internet-based, whatever it is, okay? So down here, um, we have put uh, the most recent tally of countries around the world that come under this developing uh, economies of the region, and and, uh, and you'll see some like some su surprises. Yes, China is developing only because it's so expansive, and yes, there are segments of China that are are just phenomenally developed and, and advanced. But there are also segments that are still very very backward still. Okay, and that's why that comes in. It all has to do with the kind of the balance between the two. But anyways, you check check the box here. Find one that you are interested in, and then you then will look at um, um, the USA and one other country. Okay, you could do two developing countries; it really doesn't matter. But at least one has to be developing. Okay, alrighty. Um, I created a slide deck that guides you to it, and then this is the, a how-to video. I'm not going to replicate it. It's it's I'm going to kind of rush through this, but this is what I did last semester, and it's, the, the assignment hasn't changed. Okay, so if you look at the slide deck, all right, it's going to come right up here. We're going to open it up as a PDF file. And uh, so, so you know, again, in, in a very shorthand fashion, I've, I've kind of laid out what it is, you know, we want you to do right here, okay? Um, uh, you know, this is, you know, what the data looks like when you're looking at, say, life expectancy, okay? And it's, it's, it's cool because you're able to uh, manipulate this website. We'll show you that in a second, okay? All righty. And so, you know, this this slide deck shows you exactly what you need to do. So you scroll down here, all right? And so this is, you know, where you enter your countries, USA and two other countries, okay, um, over this expanse. You can see that um, some countries have a lot of data and some never kept data, okay? So they're going to come into the game a little bit later on, especially when we look at developing countries, okay? So life expectancy is the first one, okay? We're going to take you to that point, all right? All right. Um, and then you select the data, okay? And with this over here, uh, when you click Add Country, these are all the different countries that you can select from. You just, you, if, if you click on it, an X will pop in, we'll see that. And then this is the list that is going to show up on the graph. So there's maybe some stuff in here, you'd like World and Europe, that you don't want to have. You click on it, and as long as the check's gone, then it's not going to be in your graph. And you'll see it kind of uh, coming out of the back, all right? So this is an example right here, okay, that... Um, that I looked at three different countries, Greece, United States, and Afghanistan, okay? Um, and like I said, when you click on the triangle, uh, a movie of trends change happens. So you can click on this and you can just watch it go, Drrr. it's really kind of cool, right? So it's just a little short um, movie, so to speak, okay, that, um, that you can watch trends change, okay? All right, um, right here, you can grab the uh, timeline and move it around, and I'll show you that in a sec too, 
Okay. All right. So what you got to do is um, once you get to the point that you got got the data for that particular uh, trend and what we were looking at again, we were looking at life expectancy. Okay. And then you just do to uh, um, a screen capture. Okay. Windows key shift S. Um, and then a little box will come up and you just kind of hold your mouse down and, and make a box around what it is you want to capture. All right. So that that would be a copy. Okay. And then you go to your document and you paste. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. And I show you in that video uh, that we have going on. So I'm not going to replicate that. Boom. This is how you do it for a Mac. Okay. I don't own a Mac, but I'm assuming that's the same thing. You do hold these three keys down and then you do um, a, a, a selection for the screen capture. Okay. Awesome. Um, the second part, okay, we're just comparing the, the dynamics of the populations. Again, in, in my choices were uh, the USA on the bottom here, Japan, and we see Afghanistan right here, okay? Um, choose the same countries, okay, in both exercises, all right? So in, in part one and part two. And, uh, and you look at the dynamics of the change, okay, so we can see here in 1950s in Japan, okay, um, the uh, working age population was a much greater percentage. And, and you can look at raw numbers or percentage um, by, you know, clicking on um, uh, uh, this box right here, okay, where it says relative, right? Okay, and um, so uh, this is looking at the percentage of the population that is of working age, okay? And you see back in the 50s, lots of children, very full older pe people, and the dynamic here of what, you know, the, the percentage that was working age, okay? So that you can see back here, young people were, were, were the majority of dependents on people that were working to finance their, their living, okay? Then we fast forward here to 2100 over here, and we see that um, children play a much smaller role, and now the working population is supporting the dependents in this population being older, right? And you can see how this shifts over here, okay? Afghanistan, okay, people didn't live that long, okay? And they still do not live as long as um, in other countries, in, in, in developed countries. And so you see still on a percentile basis, um, uh, uh, most of the dependents are younger people, okay? Awesome, but you do see that you're seeing this shift here, this transition there as well. All right, so that's what you do. You do screen captures with all those, okay? Um, this is me just kind of blowing it up right here, looking at the um, uh, the Afghanistan chart, and um, and you know, uh, and this just kind of shows you what you can do to kind of play with this. All right? Cool. All right, that's the that's the story right there. Okay, so you what you would do is just go right here in here to life expectancy. All right, you got to go find it. Okay, where is what are those uh, really cool graphics that uh, Dr. Walsh took in there? This is kind of fun. Play with it if you wish. You know, just show some curiosity, okay? Um, and this is just looking at um, life expectancy changes as a color-coded, going from really old here at 90 years of age to life expectancy you see here in the Sudan and Africa. It's not, it's not so great. You can see when you scroll your cursor over the top, you go from country to country like this, and you get data. And then what you can do is... Um, you know, four grins, okay, because it's kind of fun, you know. You come down here, and um, sorry, I'm going to get myself into position, and we're going to look at this transition here over time, okay. So data is just coming in, okay. Which countries, of course, Great Britain was the first one to have data, okay. Then we see it goes goes over to, you know, Sweden and Norway, okay, Denmark and those countries, okay. And we're still at the 1800s, and now France, okay. So then Canada, we're starting to pop in and get data, Okay, on this, you see the life expectancy back then wasn't so great, was it? It was less than 54 years of age. It's all yellow, all yellow, boom, 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 boom. And then you can see that these countries become more and more advanced, okay? And um, as the, um, uh, the advancement happens in the life expectancy, it gets better and better and better. And you can see the different parts of the world that are lagging behind, all right? Pretty cool. All right, so, all right, so then next, okay, we're going to come down here. This is... Um, just snapshots of exactly what we were talking about right there. Okay, so we're going to come down here. So this is the one, um, the, the the graphics that I want you guys to do, right? So um, again, you can um, look at the different countries right here that were just put into place. I'm going to add country, okay? So um, uh, like I said, I did Afghanistan, so I'm gonna, and I'm going to get rid of Africa. I'm going to get rid of the Americas. I'm going to get rid of Asia. These are gen general um, uh, statements. Oceania, okay, and you can do the same thing up here too, all right, so um, world, um, I don't want Europe, I don't want, you see in the back now I only have one country, okay, 
All right, so then we come back over here. And um, so what was I, what did I do last time? I think, all right, we'll scroll down here. And I did Japan, all right? So we checked them out. And then I did um, the United States. Got to find the old, good old US of A. And there we are, boom. See now, it, you can see in the background that we have three different countries, okay? All right, so it's all good, all right? Sorry, I'm gonna get myself up here, okay? And I'm gonna go like this, and there it is. I've got my data, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. There, and there it is, I've got my data, okay? So I would do my screen capture now. So if I were to do this, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do my Windows Shift S, Windows Shift S, okay? There it is, okay? And now I hold my cursor down, all right? And now I've captured that. And then if I go to a document, you know, for example, I can go over here, um, I'll explain this thing later, okay? And I hit paste, I put it right in there. So I put it into my PowerPoint, but I could also, you know, put it into a Word document. And I'm good to go, all right, cool. All right, so that's how you do that, all right? So you've, done, you've, you've gathered data, you've got to explain the trends, all right? And again, you can, you can watch things change over time here as we're, you see we're, we're looking at 1926, we're adding years to the graphs, okay? And you see how, how Japan, what was that, what happened here? Why the big dip in the 40s, okay? That was World War II, okay? And then, boof, they accelerated and blew right by us, okay? And you see Afghanistan very late in the game, all right? So that's what that's all about. Cool. All right, I'm done with that, guys. You do the same thing over here, but what you're going to be doing now is you're going to be looking at, again, this comparison of working age populations, okay? So, um, and then here, you know, what you're going to do, um, hopefully this thing will, will, there it is. Okay, so there's Afghanistan. Um, I can do this and look at the actual numbers in millions, or we can look at the percentages. Okay, it's kind of neat to look at the numbers only because um, you, would, you really want to know what, you know, what the situation is by looking at the, the, the uh, numbers. We can change. So I would do the same thing, a screen capture here. Windows key shift S and, and paste that in. I can change my country now, okay? So we did Afghanistan and we're gonna go right over here, like I said, to the United States. Boom, all right, and there it is. Now I got it for the United States, all right? So it's the same drill, very cool. All right, and you guys play with it, like I said, to get information, okay, on this, okay? This list of sources, okay? You can do tables and, and, and um, and have fun with this and do a good job in terms of interpreting it. All right, cool. So that's that's the CT1, okay? Um, if you look down here, there is a rubric, okay? So did you collect data from three countries, all right? Uh, did you do life expecting? You know, did you do follow the instructions, okay? Did you explain trends, okay? Um, for over 50 years of age, okay? Um, explain uh, explanation of how the data compares between the three countries selected, okay? All right? Did you have the graphs? And that's it. That's that's what we're doing. What we're doing as our rubric in our grading. Here's some some frequently asked questions, FAQs and tips. Okay. Again, again, this is me showing you what to do. All right. You click right here. Okay. And you upload your um, document as a Turnitin document. All right. Let's get on with this now. Okay. Week. Wow. I can't even believe where we're at. Six. Okay. So we look at, like I said, this is serious health consequences. We've seen this over the last two years. The serious health consequence of having diabetes when it came to uh, getting infected by SARS-CoV-2 and, and getting the disease called COVID-19. All right, um, and it's because of um, the impact that diabetes has on your all of your blood vessels, your vasculature, and then how that relates to um, yeah, inflammation. And, uh, and and people were dying from inflammation and people are suffering from long haul syndrome now, long haul COVID because of consequent inflammation, all right? All right, so um, this is you know, uh, um, done in, in 2015, okay? Still really relevant. It, it is kind of like I sh had uh, with uh, how to do your CT2, it's a slide deck, okay? And so you just click on this puppy right here, all right? You open it up as a PDF file, and you just and you scroll through really easy, easy peasy. I know it's 27 pages, but it's super easy. It's Diabetes 101, okay? Um, so we talked about processing of foods, okay? Um, and it, the focus of this is on sugar, okay? So we need energy, all right? So just like your car uses gasoline and oxygen and boom, generates heat and the pistons go, 
we kind of do the same thing, but we use oxygen in combination primarily with glucose, but we can also use oxygen in combination with fats and ketones, okay? So you people, a lot of you guys do the ketogenic diet, and we'll explain that later on, okay? But the primary fuel is glucose, guys, and um, especially for your brain. So how do we handle glucose? So we look at right here, okay? So G stands for glucose, all right? So I just had, um, you know, I don't know, you know, a candy bar or, or even a piece of bread, okay, which is just um, kind of chained glucose, um, they're called complex carbohydrates. You absorb that in through your intestines, put it into your blood, okay? Um, when the when it enters the blood, there's a there's a uh, an organ called your pancreas. Okay, the pancreas will then uh, see the glucose. Okay, it responds by releasing insulin. Okay, we see this right here, the eye, and then insulin will go to all the different tissues throughout your body. It binds like a, a key fitting into a lock. So here's my lock. Here's my key, like though, and then it opens it up and it lets in the glucose. Okay, and that's what we're seeing right here. So any failure, a failure in terms of insulin secretion or a failure in terms of um, the receptor that recognizes the insulin is going to cause an elevation of blood glucose. And that's where we get into trouble. It candy coats proteins. You're supposed to keep your blood glucose, you know, at 100 milligrams per deciliter. Okay. It's just a, a unit you measure in your blood. Okay. And, um, and if it gets higher, then all that sugar actually will you know, just like uh, honey baked ham, it, it coats proteins. Those proteins look just like a virus or bacteria. Your immune system flips out, and next thing you know, you have vascular inflammation everywhere in your body. Okay? And we'll talk about some of those consequences. So, the best thing you can do is maintain a reasonable blood glucose. Okay? All right, cool. All right, so, um, you know, how does your body respond? Okay? Um, and, and how, how do we get that condition that is the hyper, meaning a lot, glycemia, glycemia, a lot of glucose in the blood, okay? Um, there is, um, um, uh, a condition, okay, where there's too little insulin is being made, okay? Um, this would be a type 1 diabetic where it's an autoimmune disease where the immunity actually digests the, um, the uh, the pancreatic cells and so you stop producing insulin pretty rare okay one out of every 20 diabetics is a type 1 diabetic um, and then you can be a type 2 diabetic where at the end stage the pancreas begins to fail okay all righty um, when you have problems okay in terms of getting the glucose into the um, the different cells then what happens is the liver will Say because your liver is your storage facility for glucose, and so the liver, the liver then will keep pumping out glucose because all it knows is the rest of my cells are not seeing uh, what the glucose that they need. Okay, and that's because cells are not using glucose well because their receptors have become insensitive. That's the majority of cases of diabetes. It's adult onset. Okay, so what happens when you have a bunch of sugar in your blood? Um, well, that, that sugar, okay, will go um, into your kidneys and it pulls the water out, okay? And so you become dehydrated, right? So, so you have this increased thirst, okay? Because the sugar went into your kidneys and pulled the water out, you're urinating all the time, okay? Now, the other thing that's going to happen is you can have inflammation in the blood vessels to, to your eyes, okay? Uh, so blood vessels aren't working. They're not getting the energy that they need, and it can cause blurry vision. You're tired because you're not getting the glucose into the cells because your insulin receptors are not working or you're not producing enough insulin, okay? Um, what happens is with the vascular inflammation, okay, the, the out into the periphery, especially down in your, your, your lower limbs, your legs, your feet, um, your cuts and wounds are not going to heal well, and high blood glucose candy coats, so to speak, immune system cells, so they don't respond well to infection, okay? So you have a lot more infections. Now, it seems almost counterintuitive, okay, but you, you can have weight loss, okay, when you're, when you're a severe diabetic, and that's because you're peeing out all your glucose, okay? Um, you're not packaging it away, um, and so you lose weight, okay? And nausea and vomiting is a consequence of what happens to um, your liver. All right, cool. 
Um, hyperglycemia can cause serious long-term problems. We're going to have a, a video that I'm going to have you watch, John, that talks about the diabetic complications that happen in every part of your body where a blood vessel goes. So yes, um, uh, blindness, permanent blindness is a consequence of long-term diabetes. Okay, It's called diabetic. Your, the, your eyes are um, the receptive um, tissue in your eyes are called uh, the retina. So it's called diabetic retinopathy, meaning a, a pathology in the retina, okay? Um, where else do you have major blood vessels going? You have major blood vessels going to your kidneys. And if they stop having good blood flow because the blood vessels are all flamed and you have this condition called atherosclerosis, then the kidneys fail because they need blood flow to work and they're supposed to filter the blood. And next thing you know, you lose your kidney and you're on dialysis. Okay, um, like I said, out of the periphery, inflammation is going to cause nerve cell damage. And um, if you're not getting good blood flow to your legs and your feet and infections happen, okay, then amputations can occur, okay, which is, you know, a, a worst case consequence. Anywhere a blood vessel goes, guys. So heart attacks, stroke, these are all super common complications of being a diabetic. Alrighty, so type 1 diabetes, okay, um, the pancreas is not making insulin or no insulin because, because in, for reasons that are not understood, these autoimmune diseases, but it happens in young people, so it's also called juvenile diabetes, and the immune system attacks the pancreas and destroys those cells that make insulin, so these people are completely 100% insulin dependent, meaning they have to do insulin shots, okay, or do time release uh, insulin um, into their bloodstream. Um, because they can't make any. And, and if they don't uh, make insulin, then none of the glucose gets into cells and they um, have all those conditions we we're talking about, extreme fatigue and all the other co uh, complications we we're looking at. Type 2 diabetes, okay? Um, what happens is the cells are not using the insulin because um, uh, the receptors, that the, you know, the insulin fits like a key into a lock. The receptors disappear, okay? Um, they become uh, the cells become resistant to insulin because the receptors disappear for lots of reasons. Obesity is a huge factor. Okay, um, uh, having high circulating levels of of fat because you're obese will actually cause your insulin receptors to disappear. Okay, inflammation is a huge factor. This you can see becomes a downward spiral. The more diabetes you have, the more inflammation, the less receptors you have the more inflammation, on and on and on, okay? And then over time, the pancreas will fail, okay? And that's the worst case scenario. So then um, you have um, a situation where we can inject you with, with, um, with um, uh, insulin, but it doesn't work so well because you have the problem with receptors. All right, cool. All right, so like I said, very rare, juvenile, one in 20 people have this, okay? Uh, most people are first diagnosed under the age of 20, and this is you, you don't make insulin because the pancreas has been attacked, okay? So you need insulin, it's always needed for the treatment that's indicated down here, all right? Cool. All right. Um, um, and again, it has all the same um, symptoms, weight loss, loss of energy, increased thirst, thirst frequent urination. You can go in, um, into a condition where, you know, we all have heard about the ketogenic diet. And what happens with the ketogenic diet is you, you basically don't need any glucose, okay? Um, you burn through all the glucose you have stored in your liver, and then you begin to burn fat. And that's how you lose weight, okay? You, and um, then what happens with the, the, is, is um, the uh, liver converts to the fat that you want to burn uh, into these ketone bodies that it gets, get sent to the brain and heart for use, but they, they can lower the pH of the blood, okay? And so you can become, the, you know, the pH is what the readout is of being acidic. And so you have this really life-threatening emergency condition called diabetic keto acidosis okay that causes all these problems all right and so how do you how do you get to fix that okay you just you, these poor type 1 diabetics they just need that insulin so that the glucose can get into the cells so you stop using the fat stop generating the ketones okay awesome cool all right you manage this okay glucose monitoring at all times okay glucose gets high you have to inject the, the um the uh the insulin, okay? Um, educate the person to recognize the symptoms, okay? Make healthy food choices, okay? Um, you know, lots of veggies, just, you know, the Mediterranean diet. 
physical activity is going to help you out and of course insulin is key in terms of an injection all right um so this is type 2 diabetics okay um the, most people are over the age of 40 okay it's age related okay um and um but sadly it is becoming more common in younger adults as it's related to childhood obesity okay because the fat cells you know release substances okay you know the more fat you have the more fat get, gets released into the blood and it's inflammatory so you're releasing these crazy immune system messengers both of which cause cells um, in your liver and your muscle all through your body that to not have insulin receptors anymore and there you go okay all right so if you are overweight okay um uh, a non-caucasian have a family history so there's a genetic predisposition so you got to be very careful um, if you have this going on in your family okay it's just it doesn't mean you're going to get diabetes but it's just you you just have these genetic risk factors okay again here's all the things that we talked about right here okay and um and oftentimes people are early pre-diabetic diabetics are not aware the best thing you can do is, is make sure you go see your doctor and have a routine um uh, blood test done and where they'll they will check your um, hba1c your resting blood glucose and, and do maybe a glucose challenge test okay because you need to manage it okay um so um the, the the you know relying on drugs is not what we want to do okay we want to educate the population all right like you guys eat healthy okay if you do become a diabetic again there are these glucose monitoring systems before you used to always have a pinprick there's now um a, a patch so to speak okay it's a little device that you stick and it monitors your blood glucose indirectly so looking at glucose levels in your skin it's a lot easier okay exercise improves the level of your insulin receptors key key and you know once you have gone too far to do diabetes and it happens then um, you're going to have medications sometimes insulin sometimes not okay it's beyond the, the the focus of this class okay again what's what, what's the risk factor obesity i've said this a few times being sedentary okay which can create obesity but also being sedentary means you're not exercising and um, exercise actually improves insulin receptors sensitivity meaning you get more insulin receptors we are who we are if there's diabetes running in your family you have to um, uh, deal with this um, this is part of being a woman in some cases some people are at risk for diabetes um, uh, during pregnancy um, typical to this class age is the biggest risk factor okay we we, we, lo we lose our ability to regulate our insulin receptors and again um, the uh, we have the di differential sensitivity based on ethnic background we see this horrible trend in obesity that keep hammering our obesity being a risk your fat creates a perfect storm for causing diabetes okay and we see this um this prevalence okay in adults going from 1994 right here 2000 to 220 we're looking at um um you know the percentage of the population that has diabetes and you can see that it, things have really really done really poorly here in the southeast okay all right um, um that's obesity and then these so this is the obesity epidemic going across our country regionally and then down here is 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 how linked diabetes is to obesity so you can compare this to this this to this this to this and see there's a close correlation here awesome all right so this is just some shock and awe numbers it's a lot of people all right um these are the people that fill up our hospitals you know because of the related conditions too by the way okay it's a huge burden okay uh, on the person that has the problem it's a huge burden on you as a family member and caregiver and it's a huge burden on society you know a majority of our dollars that are being uh, spent out of, the Social Security, uh, out of the medicare system sorry and health insurance is going towards um, diabetes and diabetes related conditions okay so again we have blindness okay kidney failure limb amputations heart attack stroke all these okay um so it is you know diabetes alone is a, is is a, is a um, leading cause of death but if you look at for example heart attack the, the leading cause of death most times it's it is um because of diabetes all right all right cool 
again, this is again looking at the money. You know, follow the money right here, and you can see it's a big deal. Okay, a lot of healthcare dollars are one in five so are spent on on somebody that has diabetes. Okay. All right, pre-diabetes is just that your blood glucose levels are high, okay, um, higher than you want them to be, all right? So there are that, uh, and like I said, 100 is a cutoff. You're consistently at 100, 110, something like that. Um, your HbA1c, we're going to see, is over 6.5. That's 6.5% of your uh, this protein that is carried in your red blood cells it has candy coating, glycation, okay? It's a, it's a great readout. Of what's going on okay a lot of people don't know they, they don't know what's going on yes what we can do is change our lifestyle okay that's what this is all about right here okay um, prevention 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 okay uh, don't look for a drug look for a lifestyle change and it's really really important okay um, here's our hba1c okay um, that's a percentage of that protein in your blood that has sugar so seven percent it's high, it's really 6.5 is where you want to be, okay? Um, high blood pressure, okay, um, is a consequence of candy coating and inflammation in your blood vessels. Um, you also have elevated cholesterol from diabetes, okay? That creates further problems in terms of atherosclerosis. Um, smoking piggybacks with that, so don't smoke. Be active, it helps to erase some of the problems. Eat healthy food, it helps to erase some of the problems okay um yeah and if you get to the point that you're you're in trouble you really gotta watch your feet okay screening 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 okay all right um that's research okay um we um always need more research dollars and um yeah so that's 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 it right there okay so that kind of goes through everything and be be you know be on the ball be be an advocate for your parents and everything else all right so that's you know for our country um the same drill, okay, and this is looking at um, the, again, you know, a lot of you guys are business majors, the, the global economics. So this, this is, you know, a, such a huge burden, okay? And again, you look at the, the um, diabetes-related conditions, okay? Um, and this, this right here is just kind of going through how many people globally, you know, um, are, are having this problem, okay, of diabetes, you know, 220 million people globally, okay, and this was in the year 2004, so it's skyrocketed since then, okay, um, diabetic retinopathy, blindness, neuropathy uh, um, is, you know, the, the changes that happen, especially in your lower limbs and your feet, that, um, that can re, re, lots, be lots of pain and numbness and, and can re, re, result in amputation, okay? The reduced blood flow, it talks about out here, kidney failure. Um, and then any, you know, the big blood vessels that get your heart and your brain, they're the first to go, okay? So, all righty. So, lifestyle, lifestyle, this is just kind of, you know, you know it, it, it talks a lot about um, all the different risk factors, okay, right here. This is just a really cool graphic. High blood sugar, high diabetes, for what we've talked about, the inflammation, the atherosclerosis is a risk for a heart attack, stroke, anywhere a blood vessel goes, so this is called peripheral artery disease, it's going to cause high blood pressure, where you're more likely to have a heart attack or stroke, high cholesterol, where you're more likely to have a heart attack or stroke, and uh, and again, obesity is a big deal, all right? So um, it's one out of 10 people. Um, and this was a few years back. It's getting closer to about one out of eight. Okay, um, these are the you know the ABCs of diabetes. You, know, you, you monitor your uh, blood glucose, your your hemoglobin A1C. Monitor your blood pressure and your cholesterol. Okay, take your meds. Eat veggies and fruit. Be active. Okay, these are just all the trademarks. Okay, um, so. Two in every five Americans are expected to develop type 2 diabetes in their lifetime. Those are horrible numbers, horrible numbers. Okay? Um, a lot of people go blind, right? So this is a, you know, uh, 15 million people will be blind, okay? This is a quick video right here that, again, reinforces what I was talking about, how insulin works. Here's your pancreas, here's your blood vessels. This could be a muscle cell or a liver cell, okay, brain cell. Um, how we're going to get the glucose into the cells using this lock and key. You release insulin, it binds to a receptor, okay? Um, 
and then um, and then how it goes bad, okay? Um, and how those how these uh, the receptors are decrease in number so the blood glucose stays high, resulting in all these complications. So check out this guy John. He goes through the litany of complications that in terms of problems he has, okay? Um, this just is a, a review, a reinforcer. I anywhere you have major blood flow, your eyes, your brain, your heart, your extremities. Okay, all these guys. Um, again, the the um, the uh, the level of high blood glucose causes this candy coating of proteins that makes the immune system flip out, and then you get major inflammation, compromised blood flow to all this tissue, and it all dies off. All right, cool. Inflammation is key. All right. So um, this is just a readout right here of how um, obesity does this, okay? And so um, when you have more and more fat cells, this is a, um, a chemo-attractant uh, protein, all right? Uh, it's called a monocyte chemo-attractant protein. So this, this attracts immune system cells. It gets, it gets higher and higher and higher and higher, okay? Um, and it becomes a cyclic thing. Then you start releasing these are the inflammatory messengers, okay? Um, this is IL-6, interleukin. This is tumor necrosis factor. And um, what they do, okay, is um, they reduce your in insulin signaling. So it reduces the ability for you to uh, put glu glucose into your muscle and into your liver. Hormones get released from fat also go down, okay? And then, like I said, we have elevated um, free fatty acids because you have so much fat that also impact these guys right here. When you are insulin resistant, all the, the body sends out signals and the liver then keeps, keeps producing insulin. I mean, the insulin keeps producing sugar even though your sugar is sky high, okay? And it makes things worse. All right, so don't forget, do your quiz. And then we had the discussion right here, okay? Um, all right, so this is a, a, a quick run in terms of why is going on in terms of obesity. You know, why, why do we have this issue in modern, westernized, fully developed countries, okay? And it's really a, a function of, um, of access. We have unlimited access to unlimited food. And in, in it, this particular video talks about our, our ancestors and the fact that, you know, um, normally we wouldn't eat so much, but, um, you know, if we were cavemen, you never knew where your next meal was coming from. Check it out. And then we come in here and do your BMI. Okay. So you go to this website right here. Okay. It's going to click right here. It's going to take us to here. And, um, and again, it's talking about uh, the risk of obesity. So you come down here and, and, and you're able to, um, use this calculator right here. Okay. And, and see how you, you know, see what your BMI is, okay? You put in your numbers, okay? You calculate, and then you see how you rank, okay? All right, is it a good BMI? It's a horrible readout, all right? If you're a big muscular person, then your BMI is gonna be, you know, you're healthy, but your BMI is gonna be high. So there are other things, okay, um, where, that we measure. We measure our hip to waist ratio. That's a much better readout, okay? And then also there's a way um, for monitoring the percent body fat. Okay, a little bit more expensive to do. Okay, anyways, you do that. Okay, you see where you you stand. Okay, right here, you know, and then um, are you normal? Okay, um, are you obese? Okay, and then you um, you interpret it. Okay, all right. So go ahead and have fun with this. Okay, um, um, this right here is a, another really cool set of calculators put out by the Social Security system. Okay, and um, and then uh, answer the answer this uh, this prompt right here and and do well. Okay, so that's that's it, guys. Um, I'm gonna end right there. Uh, peace. Okay, and and we'll we're looking forward to reading your CTs and we'll we'll see you guys next time.